This is Ryan Kisamuyono from Dev. Welcome back to another episode of SEOCon 911. This podcast is brought to you by SEOCon Forum Bali, which is going to happen on December 4th to December 6th at Trans Hotel Bali. If you haven't get the chance to check on this conference, you can see it at seocon.id. It's, a, it's the best SEO conference that's going to happen in Southeast Asia, so you need to check it out. In today's episode, we have a special guest that I want to share with you. She gonna talk at SEO Forum as well. Uh, she's the lead of the global discoverability offering at VML, including organic search, paid search, and performance content capabilities. The discoverability group serves more than 70 enterprise brands across verticals and around the globe. The award-winning discoverability group has been recognized as the best large integrated search agency, integrated search agency of the year, and the national search term of the year. In addition to being named as the global leader of the year by the DRUM Awards, Heather is also an international search industry speakers and writers with specialized expertise in discoverability for complex multinational, multi-language enterprise brands, and many more. Based in Kansas City, She is graduated from the University of Missouri in Columbia, bachelor degree in journalism, and she is based in Kansas City. She was an adjunct professor of digital marketing at the master level at University of Kansas. So exciting for our interview for today for our guest. Please help me welcome Miss Heather Fisiox. Hi Heather, how are you doing? Great, so happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Uh, it's so awesome. I'm so excited to have this interview with you to learn more uh, because I know that uh, Asia and the U.S. is quite far, so <laughs> it's quite rare for for us to discuss, uh, to talk, uh, and this is one of the opportunities that's really awesome for me. But maybe our listeners uh, don't know about you, for, uh, don't know, haven't heard about you. I know that you're a veteran in SEO. I, I saw your videos all over the conference in the world. Uh, that's why I'm excited to have you here to uh, Indonesia. But some of them, I don't know who you are. So maybe you can introduce yourself. Sure, sure. Uh, well, Heather Fiziak, I'm based in Kansas City, Missouri, right in the middle of the United States. So truly on opposite sides of the world. So I'm really, really excited to be coming to Indonesia later this year to swap ideas about what search looks like. Um, so I work for VML, which is a big global ad agency. We have offices around the world, including in the Southeast Asia region. Uh, and we work with some of the biggest and most exciting brands in the world. And so we have the opportunity to do search work uh, in all different types of businesses and to try things in a really fast moving search market. We get a lot of the newest developments in search engines in the US. And so my job is to make sure that we help our clients stay at the front of that uh, and, and do it well around the world. That's awesome. So how have you been in this industry, the SEO industry? Let's see, I've been uh, doing this about 20 years now, if you can believe that. I got into wow. this space in the mid 2000s. So it was around the time that Google was just becoming the biggest website on earth. So it was a booming industry, but it was uh, very experimental and unsure. It, I mean, it still is, but back then it was really wild. Um, we were all just learning as we went to see if we could keep up with the Google of the world. Isn't it still wild until now? It's, I, I think with, with the current changes, uh, it's wilder, right? Uh, what do you think? Uh, you know, This is one of the most interesting times right now in search, I think since 20 years ago when, when I first got started, because at that time search engines were just emerging and we were learning a new way to find information and it was getting very popular. Well, now that AI is entering search results in the search space, uh, people are learning new ways to search again. And so we as search marketers are starting to have to rethink uh, the decisions that we make. Uh, that's one thing that I, I I believe most people, especially those marketers and SEOs, need to upgrade their knowledge about what's gonna happen. Uh, 
maybe no one knows what's gonna happen in the next few months uh whether the search gonna be uh shifting direction again i i we noticed that google start to change their move again in the past few months uh mm -hmm. what's what's happening in uh in the us on the search uh generative ai maybe you can share yeah. with others Sure. Yeah. So we're thinking about AI and generative AI as it applies to search in a few different ways. So the first way that we think about um, AI and generative AI is how can it make our work better or faster when we're producing our search and content work? Um, you know, what tools or processes can we use to accelerate uh, what we're doing and deliver that better for clients? But then we're also thinking about how it's reshaping the search results themselves. They just look different. So rather than having a block of 10 blue text links and a block of paid ads and a block of images like the old Google search results, old now, but then in generative AI search results, we're seeing those blended more to create more complete answers to questions. We're seeing integrated search results that mix and match different pieces to create that whole answer. And then the last way that we're thinking about AI and content and search uh, is how it's changing searchers' expectations. So when Google became the biggest website on earth, they changed what we expect of search because they brought us quality uh, and defensible rankings. And then when mobile devices came out, we learned a new way to search uh, because we learned that we could find things near us from anywhere. And at least in the US, we started searching for near me a lot when mobile phones came out. But then we learned that we didn't even need to do that because our phones already knew where we were. So we stopped saying near me and our search behavior changed again, right? And so now we're experiencing the power of what AI can do for us. And so our expectations as searchers are fundamentally changing. And so we're expecting different things of the search engines and we're expecting different things of uh, what this, the brands themselves should do to show up in those search results. So three very interesting developments, at least here in the U.S. Are you seeing the same in Indonesia? Yeah, we, Indonesia is quite left behind a bit. Uh, right now, we're still using the near me, like restaurant near me. Maybe soon we're going to leave out the near me. It's not on the habit uh, as for now. And uh, especially for Indonesia market, we are so social. So uh, people are searching. Mm -hmm start to shift searching from Google. They are using social media uh, to find a new content. Uh, but still, uh, Google is still the biggest search engine and YouTube as the biggest uh, video, uh, video platform. They search on all these three things. Uh, Google, YouTube, and TikTok. TikTok is so mm -hmm. good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And we are seeing that too in the US. I'm really glad you said that because um, there's kind of a debate going on in the SEO industry right now. I think it's bubbling up. There are some purist traditional SEOs who believe that SEO is just for Google, just for websites, just for traditional search engines. But I think what you said is really important. We don't always turn to Google to get information because it's not always the most efficient or most effective or best way to find the kind of information we want. Mm -hmm. If we want inspiration or instruction, maybe we go to TikTok or YouTube. And if we want to purchase something, maybe we go to an Amazon or I'm not sure what the local um, retailer is for you all. Uh, so it's, I don't know, like we, we need to rethink search beyond the search engine we need to rethink search because it's not just about the platform it's about what that person is trying to do it's a mindset right a, a searcher is trying to do something and they are in the process of discovery mm -hmm. that's where we as search professionals should really work yeah so 
totally agree. We cannot just focus on the platform itself. Uh, so so bad that a lot of SEOs are thinking they only optimize for Google, but there's a lot of opportunity uh, yeah. with other platform. Yeah. Well, you've been named to uh, by the drums as the global search leader of the year. That's very oh. uh, very impressive. I'm can blushing. <laughs> <laughs> so, can you share what innovation or studies that you believe that make you uh, name as the as the search leaders? Oh my gosh! Well, if you might, I, if I you don't to... mind to share your <laughs> secret recipe. I'm, I'm I'm so shy. I, well, I'm I'm so humbled by by the honor. Honestly, it's probably one of my favorite things that's happened to me. And and I did nothing alone, right? It's all because my team decided to put my name in for that. So that was really cool. And nothing I've ever done to achieve anything in my career is alone. And I think that is the secret. You know, the secret ingredient is collaboration. It's partnership with other people and realizing that we're not just in a technology business, we're in a relationships business. And that crowdsourcing and, and working together to accomplish things and sharing knowledge and sharing effort and connecting dots, that's the stuff um, that really makes for a high functioning team that gets great results and consistently grows our partnerships with our clients. And so honestly, I think that story is is what landed that award, I, I think. So if I would preach that to everyone. That's good. Yeah, because we, yeah, I totally agree that we cannot learn, uh, we cannot do this kind of work uh, alone. As we say for you, you're working with a lot of multinational company uh, mm -hmm. and you're doing the global search. Uh, I believe you're, uh, communicating with a, a lot of division, start from the IT guy and then the marketing and then uh, the director and everything. Uh, in your experience, what's the the most challenging? Uh, what what's the most challenging part that you ever did uh, working with this multinational global company? Oh, gosh. Well, I mean, being a company this size and speed and scale can be very challenging. Like it creates a ton of opportunity because you have people around the world, but it takes a lot of extra work to keep that together and to have, uh, you know, a consistent offering and deliverable around the world. So that's something we have to think about constantly. Um, so what we're doing in the US maybe is not what we're doing in the UK is maybe not what we're doing in our Indonesia. So we have to, I, I mean, I guess we have to meet a lot of different people's needs in a lot of different places in a lot of different ways in a lot of different roles. And so it's been important, difficult, but important to try to understand where all those people are coming from and what they need and how success is measured for them so that we as SEOs can work in service of them and the things that they're measured on. If we can help them be successful, they will help us be successful. If that's how, how we need to uh, integrate with other uh, channels like paid ads or social media, is it still, uh, Will it make the campaign better or uh, what's your experience in emerging all those uh, campaigns together? Yeah, so this is another great example of where search can serve other channels and other channels can serve us and together we'll all be better. So let's say, for example, um, if we have a brand that has a website and they have to sell on uh, Alibaba or Amazon for e-commerce. Uh, we have the ability to uh, optimize that web experience for a certain purpose, but we have the uh, ability to know enough about the brand to optimize their commerce experience differently, to reach customers at a different need state, right? And we can do the same thing for video. If people are looking for inspiration and education, we can uh, focus on that. Now, if we think about social media, we can help them better understand the information they're starting to get from TikTok and Instagram and Pinterest about what people search for there. 
And if we can help them to better understand that, because we know how to use keyword research, we can provide value to the folks that are putting out social content. And in return, we have the opportunity to better optimize their social media profiles or get content that's important to us prioritized uh, for their social content calendar. Just that open dialogue alone is really important, but then actually finding a mutual exchange of, of value just creates a more connected digital marketing program that I think has outsized results. It's just more effective. So you're saying that we need to integrate uh, all this combination from the social, uh, the posting, what, we, what we're gonna say uh, from our website. Wow, it's it's finding be those moments where we sh we can naturally intersect because something social is already doing pairs nicely with something that SEO is already doing. Why not connect those natural points of intersection, those low hanging fruit in very specific moments? So maybe our listeners are, uh, maybe they don't really uh, understand that complex about the how they combine all the stuff mm -hmm. SEO content what is your best tips that you can give to us uh, where to start about yeah starting doing this start small right start small like you're basically asking you know if we can't integrate all these departments and all these workflows what can we do to to do more integrated work and i think finding those little micro moments that i just mentioned those things that you're already doing, like you know that uh, public relations is putting out press releases, you know that they want those to be successful, offer to help. Boom, that's, that's it. That's a tiny, tiny action that can have a really big result and start that integration process. All you need is that first step and then the next step and the next, and those are projects or opportunities or new business needs. And each little moment builds on itself to create a more integrated program. But the secret is you have to be looking for those moments at all times. So anytime a new opportunity or a new need comes your way, I would encourage you to pause and go, okay, other than search, what other platform or what other channel or what other person would add value to this conversation? would make this more effective. Just that moment of pause to ask yourself that question is a habit that could change everything. Yeah, that's a good one, that's a good one. Okay, so uh, with this uh, changing on the digital landscape, how, how can we keep up? What is your best tips for us to keep up with the changes that's, gonna ha that's happening? It's so fast, even in, yes. in myself, uh, I cannot keep up with everything. What, what is your, what you're doing to keep up with the digital landscape that keep changing? I mean, other than coming all the way around the world to join SEO Con Bali, I mean, besides that, <laughs> you know, that's yeah, going to be that. really great. <laughs> yeah, you know, getting ideas from around the world is actually a big part of my strategy, right? I want to see and hear what other people are doing. And we don't always have to travel to do that, right? We can go online and join the community and, and talk to other experts. I find it really difficult too, honestly. I, I don't know that I do keep up. I think as I uh, have been in this industry so long, I'm accumulating little bits of information, but it's changing so fast in front of me in real time. It, it's so hard. So I, I feel I feel totally the same. My best strategy is honestly, you know, paying attention to a few big topics myself. Like I am personally focused on the impacts of AI on our industry. I am personally focused on Google's antitrust lawsuit in the US, these really big themes. But other people I work with maybe are more deeply focused on developments in tech or the algorithms and someone else might be more interested in content marketing and social search or something like that. So I'm just doing my best to tap into other people who are also passionate about search, which I guess is why conferences are so important. Yeah, it's not for promoting the SEO con, but yeah, of course it's promoting 
for SEO content. But I agree. I, I also <laughs> travel. Uh, I come. I I joined the Moscon, but only the, on the virtual. I joined the Brighton SEO for virtual, uh, because it's the time to travel is quite far away. Uh, it is. <laughs> yeah. So. I and yet, this, you this can be and I found each other, right? From around the world, yeah. our network of people, just yeah. talking to other SEOs, we found each other. All right. But the, the hottest topic, at least for now, the biggest topic uh, that people are talking about is AI. What, mm -hmm. what do you think about AI and how it can, how it's going to change our marketing or our mm -hmm. SEOs? Uh, some people are saying that SEO is that <laughs> uh, because of AI. Uh, what's your perspective for, about it? Um, I hesitate to say SEO is dead uh, because, you know, the platforms will change forever. The ways and places people search will change forever. What does not change is the human desire to search. So as long as we are evolving how we think about what we do to be more than the platform, more than Google, more than websites, to instead focus on that customer and that search mindset, I think we're going to be okay. It just might look a little bit different. I mean, what are the ways it will look different? Uh, some of the ways it lo might look different could include measurement. Like SEO has been in the business of selling websites and clicks for 20 years, but that might not be the best or only measure of success in the future of search. I mean, what are you thinking about differently in Indonesia as it relates to AI? Well, for AI in Indonesia, it's still so new. We are so lucky that we have our own bahasa. So we are not using English for our uh, day to day. So there is a big opportunity that AI not understand that much yet, not like like for English. Uh, so uh, very clever. Yeah, very clever. But I believe it's only for a few the next few <laughs> months that's gonna be changing yeah. because the AI. Previously, we are using Google Translate. It took like uh, a lot uh, a long time for the Google search to learn about Bahasa, uh, about our language. Uh, but nowadays with uh, AI is so fast. We even have, we even create a lot of content using AI that is so much better than human writing. Wow, uh, that is saying something. Because in the US, I mean, maybe it's because there's so much junk out there. <laughs> but uh, in the US, the content that AI is producing is sort of just okay, right? It, it needs a lot of human touch it needs a lot of human input and crafting and refinement um, but we're actually having clients come to us and hire us to fix content they made with ai that's actually doing more harm than good mm. yeah we haven't that we haven't found it yet for bahasa because the i believe the source is not that many so uh but we need to be careful because uh since the last updates on google and uh, on other platform uh some are having a bad, uh, bad effect on their set as well. The traffic's dropping, uh, and yeah, a lot of bad happens. Uh, bad things happens on the on the site. But other than that, uh, so excited w with what the AI can do for us as the marketers. So yeah, I think it's so powerful to making our work better and faster. I do think it's going to lead to a lot of junk content creation and a lot of flooding the internet with garbage. So I think it's going to get worse before it gets better, like more competitive. But I think AI could also be a part of the solution to cleaning that up. Um, but these platforms are going to have to think about how to discern the good from the bad, just like Google had to do 20 years ago. Yeah. But the thing is, you've been in the industry since... 20 years ago uh, so I I believe you you uh, you have experienced uh, every single time the Google updates everyone saying the the SEO is dead but it's keep rising SEO is dead uh, but it's still there and oh. I hope after the AI the SEO is, is also still there but only different way the intent for search are still uh, there it's being reborn in new ways again and again every 10 years you know yeah. Yeah, that's why uh, 
I saw that a lot of opportunity that uh, we can grab on the on this new era uh, with the changes that's happening. If we cannot take the opportunities, then it's our loss because it's the biggest opportunity since, like you said, since the Google uh, starting. Yeah. Uh, it might be the the best opportunity that we can grab. Yeah. I would urge marketers to use it wisely and still have that human touch to make sure it adheres to quality and accuracy standards, because I do think those trust and credibility signals are going to be important, but it's undeniable that AI is a powerful tool. Yeah, I agree. So with that say, what is in, in the future, what is uh what do you think the biggest challenge and opportunity that digital marketers, especially for those who are in the SEOs, uh, paid performance, going to face? I mean, keeping up, like you said, is definitely going to be a major battle, major battle for all of us as marketers. Um, fighting, fighting the flood of bad content and junk is definitely going to be very difficult. And finding ways to challenge disinformation, misinformation, um, hallucinations in the AI, all of that stuff is going to be uh, stuff that we need to learn to adapt to. And we need to, I think more importantly than anything, we need to figure out how to navigate our clients through this to make good sound choices that even though we don't know where AI is going and what's going to happen from here that we can feel good about and feel confident are the right thing to do and therefore uh, will perform over the long term in a sustainable way. So a lot of the principles we learned originally still apply. It's not learning an entirely new skill set. It's just evolving how we think about our old skill set. Yeah, and we still need to be reminded uh, be reminded by the old thing, the foundation. I believe the foundation is most important than others because everything is just changing a bit. When the foundation is good, uh, then you are. It's you gotta be still good. All right. So totally agree. Uh, yeah. So, lastly, I I'm so excited that you're gonna come to Bali this year uh, to join our conference. Uh, can you share what you're going to discuss on this for us to learn from you directly? Oh my gosh. Well, I am so excited to meet all of the attendees uh, this year. Thank you for, for having me on the bill. Um, I'm going to be talking about a lot of what we talked about today, the cross-platform search journey. And I will be giving your conference attendees a very special editable search journey map template that explains it all. But I'm gonna be talking about how that search journey and searcher expectations and behaviors are changing, especially with the rise of things like AI. Uh, and I'm going to talk about what that means for how we need to adapt our search strategies. And to think bigger, right? To think beyond Google and think beyond website to a broader idea of what search means. But this search journey map tool that I'm gonna share with your conference folks uh, I think that's going to be a really powerful way to uh, illustrate what we see in that search data and tell a more complete story that our clients can act on. I'm pretty excited about it. I hope they love it. Oh, I cannot wait for your speaks. <laughs> I, I also <laughs> want, I, I want to learn about it uh, because the search journey is something that uh, easy to talk, but it's so hard to implement because yeah. Uh, Everything is changing, uh, so if you have the maps, I, I definitely want to see it. I definitely want to. I think it's it. gonna be a game changer. I hope. Anyway, I think it's a really powerful and simple tool. So fingers crossed for good luck. <laughs> so I hope to, to uh, see you this uh, December, uh, and we can discuss more and hang out with other SEOs and agency owners and marketers to explode their journey on the uh, marketing and ready for 2025. Well, Same. Looking forward to it. Thank you so much. Yeah. So thank you for uh, having this interview with me and I hope the listeners all are learning something new that they can apply for their business and they can see what's the opportunity that they can take uh, for their business. Okay. Thank you very much.
I hope you enjoyed the interview. If you haven't subscribed to this podcast series, please do subscribe now. And once again, this podcast is brought to you by SEO on Forum Bali. I hope you enjoyed the interview. I got two or three nuggets that I can, I cannot wait to apply to my business. Once again, this podcast is brought to you by SEO on Forum Bali. It's the largest SEO conference in Southeast Asia, and you are invited to come to this event. We're gonna have tremendous speakers from Heather, Greg Gifford, Andrew Holland, and many more. Check more information at seocon.id, and I hope I can see you there. Thank you for listening to this episode. I hope I can see you on the next one.